everyone. It is good to see you again. I will tell you that being with you is my absolute favorite part of my day. I hope you've been enjoying the workouts. If you are staying in order and watching episode by episode, the last one that was broadcast was for the primary students, TK, kindergarten, first, maybe second grade. Today's lesson is geared for the older students, third and up, mainly for fifth grade, but I will fill you in on how it is applicable to the grades below that. I'm going to be talking to you today about the physical fitness test. We call it the PFT. It is a fitness test given to every single fifth, seventh, and ninth grader in California. So if you are a fifth grader right now during the shutdown, some of you might be doing a silent cheer that you don't have to do that test this year. However, if things stay the same, you will take it in seventh and ninth grade. So you wanna continue practicing the components as you have during the school year so far. I wanna tell you about the components and I'm gonna break this session into two segments. For me, it's a lot of talking. That means a lot of listening for you and I know you like to be moving. So we'll do the first four segments, take a break and I'll come back to you at the end of the episode. So there are six components to the physical fitness test. Boys and girls, you will not fail fifth grade or seventh grade or ninth grade if you don't pass all of the components. I wanna make that really clear. We wanna prepare you though as teachers so you feel prepared to take that test. Just like your math and language arts teachers help you prepare for those subjects. I want you to get on the mat that day and feel prepared that you can do your best job on your push-ups or curl-ups or whatever component you may be taking. Some things I also forget to say to kids sometimes is you can also exceed a standard. The state has set standards for the number you should be able to do or a time limit for you. You can always run the mile faster. You can do more push-ups or curl-ups. That's called exceeding the standard. But I'm gonna to talk to you today about the minimum standard, okay? So let's talk about the six components of the test. The first test is one that you're probably most familiar with. It's the mile run. We test your aerobic capacity. How hard is your heart working? Is it working the way it should? That test is on your track at your site and all the tracks are different sizes. So for your school, it might be four laps or six laps or eight laps. And I know that is a component of the test that teachers have you practice all year long. Now listen for the scores, okay? If you are a boy and you are 10 years old when you take the test, Okay, I'm talking about fifth graders. So boys out there, raise your hand. If you're a boy that's 10, the state says you should be able to run the mile in 12, I'm sorry, 11 and a half minutes. So 10 year old boy, 11 and a half minutes. But if you turn 11 and you're taking the test when you're 11, the state says you should be able to do it in 11 minutes. So you have 30 seconds less to complete the mile. Now, I didn't make the rules for these assessments, boys and girls. For girls, it's different. Girls get more time. I know the girls out there are cheering. The boys are like, what? I know. So if you're a 10 year old girl, when you take the test, you have 12 and a half minutes to finish. And if you turn 11 before the test, 12 minutes. So the goals are different for some tests, for boys and for girls and for ages. If you didn't get that, you can definitely check the website by the state and take a look at those numbers. The second test is body composition. And I tell my students, do you weigh what you should for how tall you are? Do you weigh what you should for how tall you are? That is a very quick test done by your health tech or your school nurse. It's done in private. You go into their school office, you get on the scale, they see how tall you are, and they see how much you weigh. Again, different standards for boys and girls, different standards for your age on the day that you test. The next assessment is for flexibility and it is the shoulder stretch. Now for some of you watching, you're gonna say that is the easiest test, Miss Robin, but I'm gonna show you something that proves that I'm human just like you and things are hard for me. The shoulder stretch, you either get a yes, yes, pass, pass, or a fail or a no. Let me show you how it is recorded. 
I'm going to turn to the side. So your teacher will usually have students line up three or four at a time. Your right arm goes up and goes behind you. Then you lift your left up. And I'm going to turn my back to the camera. Do you see how my right hand is touching my left hand? That means I would get a yes or a pass on my right side. And I've been doing this long enough that I know all of you out there are doing it right now, and that's okay. But boys and girls, watch my left side. My left arm goes up and back, and guess what? Boys and girls, I'm a no or a fail on my left side, and I've been practicing for four years. So it's a good example of something that I can do to continue to practice. So maybe one of these days I'll be a yes and a yes. Okay? The next test is curl-ups, and it's one of the most challenging tests that there is. You are going to do curl-ups while listening to something called cadence. Cadence is like a tempo or a count, and you're required to do one curl-up every three seconds. Your teacher will provide you with a mat and some instructions. But let me tell you a little bit about the format and what we're watching for. Curl-ups test your abdominal strength and endurance, okay? I use this motion to talk about endurance, pushing through something even when it's hard. You're tired or you don't feel like you can do one more. You're going to push through it. You will have the cadence playing for you. One curl up again every three seconds. It will sound something like this. Up, down, up, down. And I'm going to play that cadence for you while I model the curl ups. This Strictly Boys and Girls is a stomach workout, abdominal. You may have seen uh, sit-ups before where people use their hands. No hands. No one can hold your feet. It is strengthening and seeing how strong those stomach muscles are. It's almost like a string is pulling your belly button up to the sky. Now, I always encourage my students to practice at home. When you're practicing, have mom or dad or a brother or sister hold your feet for you so you can build that strength. Or stick your feet under your couch or your bed to build that strength. You won't get stronger without practicing, okay? So, during the curl-up assessment, you are allowed one, we call that a form break. A form break is a mistake or an error. The second form break, we stop you. So say you're doing your curl-ups, and I use my arms like this, because you're going up and down, and you get to number six, and you make a mistake, we keep counting. But on number nine, you make a mistake. So your score would be eight. We count your first error, we stop you at your second, and then take the one that you finish completely. Most mats have some kind of line for you, either with tape or a strip that goes around the band or the mat that tells you how far you have to come up. And it does take a lot of practice. And again, I encourage you to find some videos online from my experience, there aren't a lot of really good videos for kids to watch. Most of the physical fitness test videos are geared for your teachers or your parents or your principals to watch to help them train them to administer the test for you. Okay, so this may be your best bet for a while, but check out there to see. And watch them multiple times so you learn all of the requirements so you can do your best job. Now, before I go to the mat, let me tell you about the standard for the curl-ups. And again, I'm focusing on fifth grade. As you go up in grades, seventh and ninth, when you take the test, those numbers are expected to go up. So listen carefully. If you are a boy or a girl and you are 10, your standard is 12 curl-ups. That is one of the tests that is the same. Boy, girl, 10 years old, 12 curl-ups. If you turn 11 before testing, the requirement changes. It changes to 15. Okay, so boys and girls who are 11 during testing will do 15 curl-ups. 12 if you're 10, 15 if you're 11. Okay? So let me model for you the curl-ups. I'm going to move down to my mat. <clears throat> I have my phone here so I can turn the cadence on for you to hear. 
your feet are flat, your head has to touch the mat, and your hands have to stay flat. Again, if you're practicing, absolutely, let someone hold your feet. But what I call the real deal, someone cannot hold your feet. Okay? So your hands are going to come up, and again, there's going to be a line that you have to pass. Okay? And down. Up and down. I call this the Superman. No Superman. Okay? Your arms have to stay flat. It's very challenging. Okay? Your shoulders have to touch the ground. So I'm going to play just the first part of the cadence so you can hear the speed of your tempo or the rhythm or the beat that you have to keep to take the curl up assessment. Okay? Let me make sure the volume is up. And again, parents, you can find this on the internet to here. I think. Let's see here. We'll begin the curl ups now. Ready? Begin. Up. Down. One. Up. Down. Two. Up. Down. Three. Up. Down. Four. Up. Down. Five. Up. Down. Six. Up. Down. Seven. Up. Down. Eight. Up. Down, nine, up, down, ten, up, down, eleven, up, down, twelve, up, down, thirteen, up. So I hope that gives you an idea about the form for your curl ups. Again, abdominal strength, your tummies, your stomachs, strength, how strong are they? And endurance. Do you feel like you can't do one more? I bet you can't. So that is an introduction to the first four components of the physical fitness test. I'm going to give you a little break from my voice to watch the other sessions. I will be back. I hope you're waiting for me for the trunk lift and push-up segment. I will see you in a little bit.